Hello, everybody, and welcome to this demonstration of the Rental Tracks system. Uh, this time, we're going to focus on going through as if you're an AV company, but mostly focusing on the checking in and checking out functions. Uh, if you're in the event industry doing lighting, staging, and whatnot, a lot of our clients have commented on having high value equipment, uh, needing to have up to date inventory, but also being able to check it in and out so that you're using it based on serial numbers. Uh, and tracking your high value equipment as they're being used. So that's what we're going to go through right now. Um, you've probably seen a lot of our how-to videos on uh, the specific functions. I'm just going to go through one workflow. First, I want to check my product to make sure I have the serial numbers in here. So let's type in light, for example. So let's use a three foot multicolor up light. We'll select on this. It shows I have eight stock of these, but I can attach specific serial numbers to it. So maybe my serial number is one, two, three, four, ABC, matching it with a barcode that is also one, two, three, four, ABC. And I can create a new serial number, maybe one, two, three, four, XYZ, and the barcode will match. And so on. So you can create serial numbers and barcodes in here as well. And we'll close this. So that's the focus piece we're going to use. So what I would do is I create my order. Maybe first I want to check is my availability. So I know that that's in my lighting. So the client is looking for uh, lighting on the 4th of December to the 5th. I know I want to look at my lighting. So I'll select this category here and list my products. Here I can quickly take a look and see, okay, yep, I have the three foot multicolor up light. Eight are available, none booked, and they're $15 a day. So this gives me a really quick snapshot of what I have available. Then when I want to rent it out, I would just check it off and choose my order type down at the bottom. So this is how I separate my clients. Maybe it's staging, festivals, charity events, uh, whatever you need to do. These are all different order types down at the bottom, these buttons. So I can create my paperwork to match that client and also have tracking of the different clients that come through my system. So I'll select the audio visual for now. These are kind of generic for our purposes. I'll type in Bob, he's my client that's calling us. I can also use the new customer button on the left to create a new client as well. And maybe um, for the project purposes, I can select a uh, project in my system. So I'm grouping my items together. So maybe the client wants a quote for the staging, a quote for the lighting, and a quote for uh, the fencing uh, at the center at the, this event that's happening. Instead of putting it all on one quote, you separate it and group it together under a project. That way you can, if the client wants changes made to the staging, you just open up that specific part of the entire project and group it together. So I've got my date already set in here. Over on the right hand side, I can see a contract that I'm attaching. And I'm jumping around a little bit here because there's a lot of functions inside our system and you're probably only gonna use maybe 70% of them uh, for your own specific business. You might use 100% of them, but um, we, we have a lot of variety in clients, so you're, you might not use all of it, so I'm not going to go through every single piece. You can go through that as you get set up in the system. But for now, over here on the right, I'm going to see a list of my contracts. You might have multiple contracts that you need to, to uh, be able to pull from, whether it's a lighting contract, staging contract, charity contract, whatever. You can select the contract you want to attach here, how the client is going to pay. And down here for the status, I can set this to whatever I need. So if I'm just giving pricing right now, I want to set the status to price calculation. That's just going to create the paperwork I need and it's not going to hold my inventory. If I want to give them maybe 14 days, two weeks to decide if they're going to use it, I would set the status to quote. That will hold it for me and give them some time to figure out if they want to use the system or not, use the, use the products or not. Otherwise, I set it to booked if they're going to move forward. So your entire inventory is controlled by this drop down menu. If I scroll down, there's a custom field section here. This is where you create custom fields based on your business. Everyone's unique, so you can set up whatever you want in here. So I can say deliver after 2 p.m. to gate A, and I can see that both my customer and then my staff, my internal staff are gonna see that because they're listed in green, but this won't show up on the invoice or credit note because it's in red. Scrolling down a little bit further, I can see my uplight is already added to the order. So I've got one Uplight automatically added here. I can change my quantity. Let's say they wanted to rent 10. It's gonna let me know that I don't have 10 available on stock, so it's gonna automatically revert to eight. So you have two options here. So the system right now is currently set to limit it to my inventory, if, but a lot of times we will sub-rent and find the pieces from somebody else, either buy it by creating a purchase order or sub-rent from somebody else. You do have the option and watch our sub-rent video to learn how to make that happen. 
you do have the option to, to be able to overbook your items and rent from somebody else. So that's no problem. So I've got my app placed in here. Maybe I also want to do um, a mixer package. Uh, here's a PV mixer. I can just add this in here as well. And we also have the ability to create package products. So if I type in package or pack, I can then see here um, all of the different packages in my system. So here's a tent package. Why not throw that on there too? You can see the pricing is based on the tent. The client really only wants to know how much to rent the tent. They don't need to know that it comes with a roof, a center pole, and four perimeter poles, but your staff needs to know to pack all of that. So the pricing is taken out of these green lines and put into the top white line. So once we've done that, we've got our total down here at the bottom. I'll scroll up. You can go along the tabs along the top here and add in any payments that you might need. So 10% deposit, they paid cash, and it was um, $52.50. You can set the delivery location as to where you're gonna go set up. It doesn't have to be based on a client. You can put it in a venue as well, um, or wherever you're gonna take it. You can have somebody listed as responsible so you know who's in charge of this event. You can also tag your staff on who is going to work this event. You can say you are driving, be ready. You can attach any files that you need, both internally and to the customer. Internally, maybe you need to set a map on how to get to the location. The customer might need to see an insurance certificate or something like that, maybe a catalog from you. You can attach that as well. And then the media tab ties directly to our mobile app where you can take pictures of the event happen, of your, your on-site event and upload it directly to this file, to this order, or maybe you can, you can upload a signature from the person who signed off for the delivery as well and it's all stored under the media tab. So once we've done that, I'm going to save the order. Two things change. One, I now get a log tab that tracks all of when, who did it, and what happened to this order, so I can track everything. And I also get my paperwork here for my uh, customer sheet and my internal sheet. So the customer sheet looks like this. And you can customize this to look how you need. It's got the price, the totals, the taxes, how much is paid. For some reason we set up on this one. Uh, one of our clients must have set up in the demo a Euro conversion, which is totally fine. You set all this up. And then my contract is assigned on the next page. Internally, I can see what it looks like as well. I can see where the pieces are, what they are, and how many pieces that they have, including that de delivery instruction. But I want to show you the checking in and checking out. So I can see that this was on December 4th. So when I'm ready to check out these products, and this is obviously going to be closer to the date, I'm going to go to my In and Out tab. I'm going to set my date up in the top right hand corner to be a specific date interval. So from the start date of, let's say, December 1st to an end date of December 9th. What's gonna show up on the left-hand side is that order that we created, the order number 57. When I click on checkout, I can then start scanning my products and it will start scanning out each product as I scan it. And it looks to start scanning out each piece. If I scan out specific serial numbers, it will assign that specific serial number to that piece as well. And I can also then scan out the six uh, non-serialized items. But if I scan out number four of them and then click complete checkout, what happens is the system marks it as a partial checkout because the job isn't done yet. So I need to go in there and finish it. So I can come in here, scan out the other two pieces, and it will uptick to the right amount, and I can complete the checkout. Once that's happened, the system is waiting for it to be checked back in. So once I click on check in, I can see that I've got two serial numbers checked out. There's one, two, three, four, A, B, C. So that one came back fine, but what if one, two, three, four, X, Y, Z, Z came back broken? I'm gonna check it into service or return over here. And then I can go ahead and check back in all the rest of the pieces, just like they were fine. And click complete to check in. Okay. Um, oh, I need to, when I was, if, when you scan it in, this will check everything in just fine. Okay. So maybe I wanna have this one instead of checked in there, I'm checking it in under XYZ. Okay, well, as, I'm doing this manually using the clicking, so as you're scanning things in, it goes a lot smoother. Um, when I click the complete check-in, that piece that I sent to maintenance, I'm saying it might have been damaged. So one thing happens is I get a new 
pricing sheet created as if I was charging the client the $500 to replace this piece in my inventory. So I could send this off to the client if I like and charge them for it just by setting the status to booked and sending it off to them. If I leave it as a price calculation and close this out, what happens is that product then goes into maintenance and I can look at it here under maintenance overview. So I can see this three foot multicolor uplight was set to maintenance today. If I want to open this up, I can click on the edit link to change the anything about the actual product or I can click on this maintenance task and change the date to the day that I'm actually going to do the maintenance on. So once I've done that, I've set it up in my system, I can download my maintenance report and I'm tracking all of what's happened to my items, right? So I want to be able to track if they were damaged or what happens in the field, but also be able to find out what's, what's going on with my products. So that's how you're going to work the system, um, uh, you know, at a high level. There's a lot more that will happen with it, but that's the checking it out. If you have any questions, uh, definitely get a hold of us. Send any of your sales-related questions to info at rentaltracks.com. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks.